Alright guys, what is up? Stun Gun Gaming back at it again with another video for you guys. So this is um, a rant video about extraction. Surprise surprise, I actually got the game. I'll probably stream it later. Um I wanna say this, okay? My rant is not on the game itself. The game itself is actually alright. You know, compared to Siege, Siege is an awful game. However, Extraction, on the other hand, is actually pretty good. I'm gonna be honest here. Extraction is actually a decent game. The problem, as with some, some specific games nowadays, is the community, okay? So, I was gonna make this video earlier today, but I figured I would hop on and see if I could actually get an example of this and get footage of said example, and I have footage of the example. I'm doing Maelstrom Protocol, trying to do my weekly study so I can get the uh, the currency, you know? Because I'm not, I'm not a whale, I don't spend money on the game, right? I don't spend a whole lot of money on microtransactions. So I prefer to try to earn it through just grinding and doing it the hard way, right? Actually working for it. This guy decides, um, okay, I should actually explain this beforehand. So, for those of you who don't know, in Rainbow Six Extraction, when you go down, you have a little, um, you, have a, you actually have a health bar when you're down, and the parasite will actually try to kill you while you're down, so you have to fight them off until you can get revived. Once you get revived, if you go down after that, you will have this like yellow foam stuff cover you and your teammates have to carry you to an extraction pod and exfil with you. The problem is not everyone cares enough to actually help you get the operator back. Now, I know what someone's gonna ask. Um, okay, well stun, what uh what happens when they don't exfil with your operator? Here's what happens when they don't exit with your operator. They go MIA, meaning you have to go to the same area that you were just at, and try to rescue them, which is not easy if you do it solo. It's easy if you have a partner to do it with. It's not easy solo. In Maelstrom Protocol, you don't have a choice on whether you do it solo or co-op. Again, the weekly research task is always getting 20,000 XP in one single incursion. <clears throat> you know, you complete three objectives, boom, you've got it. Now, the match that I'm going to show you guys, or the, the thing I'm going to show you guys, we were on the third objective, it was planting the nest trackers. Now, granted, I, I'm not going to talk bad on this teammate, even though they weren't using a silencer and we could have stealthed it, I'm not going to talk bad on them. Because they at least tried to go for my operator, but they themselves ended up getting KO'd in the process because they had went down previously. So they at least tried. Our other teammate decided that oh, one of us went KO, so I'm just not going to bother trying to get their operator. So then he exfills. Well, if you don't know, after you go KO, it takes one vote to activate an objective. Whether it be the airlock, whether it be exfilling, it takes one vote. This guy voted to exfil, leaving my teammate 30 seconds to go and grab me. From the airlock, to the extraction pod. You cannot do that in 30 seconds, especially from where he was. He couldn't have done it. He went, he, he got KO'd and lost his operator as well. Now, here's the thing, guys. When your operator goes MIA, you lose the EXP that you were holding until you go and rescue that operator. If you don't rescue the operator, you don't get your experience points that you just earned. And it's really frustrating because a Maelstrom Protocol can take over 30 minutes, by the way. But doing just a couple objectives, 10-15 minutes maybe. 
right? If you're only going for the twenty, uh, the twenty thousand experience. But there's a huge problem with that. And again, like I said, there are toxic teammates. And you guys are going to see, I put a couple of um, choice words in the chat. But you know what? I was irritated because this guy decides that he's going to just get two people, MIA operators, instead of trying to exfil with the operators, he's going to let them go MIA because he's a bad teammate. And you can make whatever excuse you want for him. Oh, he was on such and such health. At the end of the day, it's a team game. It's a co-op game. The team is supposed to back itself up. We're all supposed to have each other's backs. And if one person isn't playing their part, you can't really be a co-op team. So, without further ado, I'm going to show you guys the clip. And you guys can tell me what you think about it. <laughs> But don't beat yourself up. We can still turn the tide. So you guys can see there at the end, I got uh, I got a little bit toxic at the end, but I mean, come on, when when your operator goes MIA and you lose the EXP that you've just had, and by the way, it's not only it's not only the EXP you earn during that incursion, 
it's like overall EXP. You lose a ton of EXP when you go MIA. And then if you don't get your MIA operator, you lose lose the EXP. See, when you're MIA, you don't fully lose it. More of Ubisoft just holds it hostage until you get your operator back. Which is dumb. It's really dumb. But, at the end of the day, what are you going to do? It's more of a community issue than a Ubisoft issue. Because overall, I would say Extraction is... Hmm... I'd, say, I'd give it like a 7.5, 8 out of 10. Not the best game I've ever played, but it's far from the worst. I'm going to be honest with y'all. It's definitely far from the worst FPS game I've ever played. And to be honest, I think the worst FPS game I've ever played is probably Siege. And not because of Siege itself, but because Ubisoft completely neglects it. So... I just don't get what's wrong with people. And by the way, if y'all caught that at the last frame there, he was, uh, the guy that left both me and my teammate behind said lol. So, goes to show that he did it just to screw both of us over. That's the type of people you have playing the game, Ubisoft. And I like how you guys said my, um, my little, uh, message there would be held for review. However, the guy that just made two people lose their operators doesn't get put under review and is not going to get banned. That's by the book definition of griefing, Ubisoft. That is literally griefing. Why is he not banned? Or why is he not under investigation, as you guys would put it? Because on Siege, there's actually an option to report people for griefing, which is very ironic, by the way, because it never does anything. I've only ever seen one person on console get banned for griefing. And the guy that got banned for griefing only got banned because the whole team reported him. I think I've said this before on the channel, but that's one of the only people I've ever reported who got banned. And it wasn't even my report that got him banned either. Because if it was my report, Ubisoft wouldn't care. I report mouse and keyboard cheaters, I report griefers, I report players like that all the time when I am on Siege. Because I encounter players like that all the time. Okay, people try to, people on PC try to downplay the amount of cheaters that are on console. I'm going to be dead honest with you guys. I casually play CSGO competitive from time to time, and I have not seen near as many cheaters on CSGO as I have on Siege, on console. Console Siege. Not PC Siege, it's even worse on PC. I will give you PC players that, it is way worse on Siege, because mod menus are way easier to get cheating devices, you can literally download them from the internet, right? It's... I mean, I do feel bad for you guys on PC, but at the same time, you guys gotta understand that it is very much possible to cheat and hack on console. You can jailbreak a PS4 pretty easily. All it takes is downloading a software onto a USB drive importing it to your PS4. That's all it takes to cheat. So, it, granted, it's not as easy as it is on, um, on PC, but people do their mods and stuff like that themselves. They don't do it but from getting it on the internet or whatever. They make, like, they code it themselves. So it's a lot harder to detect, it's a lot harder to ban people like that. And when I say people are, like, cheating and hacking on console, I'm not joking. Earlier, I played against a guy that was wall hacking on console, by the way. I don't have this game on PC, nor will I ever get this game on PC. Because Siege is just... I don't know. I don't know how this went from Extraction to Siege. But, you know, long story short, it's more of a community issue with a lot of things. So, yeah.
that being said, um, we're gonna we're gonna sit here and just watch till the end of this gameplay because I do catch the shiny Torterra right there. So yeah, that being said, I will catch y'all in my next video and peace out.